I made the mistake of giving Axel a treat because I thought it would help him be quiet. He's even louder than before. Hey guys, you're not gonna learn much except how to make, I have to come close cause it's so tiny. A small little polymer clay planter like this. I'm gonna show you how I made this tiny little thing and show you that it's real. Cause some people were saying it wasn't real. It is real, okay? It's a real plant in a real pot that I handmade with a drainage hole. Okay, let's do this. Big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses available for curious and creative people. Explore new skills and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. A class I've watched and really recommend is Happy Houseplants, Pick a Perfect Plant by The Sill. It's important to start off with the right plant to have success in growing indoors, and this course makes great points on that topic. Whether you're hoping to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join and connect with other creatives, Skillshare is the place to keep us learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. And again, that information will be at the top of my description box. I really believe in Skillshare. I think it's awesome. Definitely head to the description box to take advantage of that offer. With all of that being said, let's get back into the video. All of the products I use in today's video will be listed down below. There are a few things I highly, highly recommend grabbing if you plan to make polymer clay pots. First, I recommend getting a baking mat. So this one actually came with this rolling pin, which I also 10 out of 10 recommend. You can twist off the sides and put these little things on. There's a few others in here as well. You can change the size so it'll roll your clay out like evenly. You can also use it for baking if you want, but I don't bake. I just use it for polymer clay planters because <laughs> I'm not a baker. Of course, you'll need clay. I also have this kit of tool of three clay tools, which I 10 out of 10 recommend, really helps. If you're gonna pick up any of these, 10 out of 10 recommend picking up an extruder, extractor, it's called an extruder or an extractor, I'm not sure. It just makes it so easy to get even sized little like rolls of clay, especially if you do like um, the braided planters, which is what I prefer to do and that's what we're going to be doing today. So highly, highly recommend this. It makes it so much easier and such a faster process. If you're gonna pick up one thing, let it be this. All right, let's get into it. Of course, first you need to like warm up your clay. I just, Oh, my bracelet gets in the way. I just like flatten it with my palm and then like re-put it together and then flatten it again just to warm it up so it's easier to work with. It makes a difference, I promise. This is one of the things I've learned. So now I'm gonna put this, oh, this is the one thing about the extruder. You have to like twist it all the way back and mine squeaks. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Well, first I'm gonna take a piece of it, this big, and I'm gonna roll it in a ball, put it on my little mat, and use my rolling pin to like roll it out so that it's even. It doesn't have to be big. Of course you can do this in different sizes, but I'm just making tiny bits. Uh, this is a cookie cutter thing I got, a little kit I got off of Amazon. I'm gonna use this. Yeah, I'm gonna use this to like cookie cutter out my shapes. And I'm gonna be able to get quite a few out of this. What's your favorite color? We need to preheat our oven to 275. All right, it's preheating. I am going to roll all of this other clay together, the rest of the clay, and I'm just gonna roll it so that it'll fit inside of this. Just flatten it at the top, put the thing on, and then you just twist it the opposite direction so the clay comes out of the mold. And it makes it so much easier. Now we have these worms. Pull them off and I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so um, I have my little braid done. I actually have, I've done a few so I can show you some close-ups. Now I'm gonna take one of the shorter pieces and take like this roll, this other kind of rolling pin that I got specifically for polymer clay from the craft store. And I'm gonna roll out this piece, the shorter piece of clay so that it's just like flat, but like long. And then I'm gonna put it onto 
the back side of the braid I just made so that we'll be able to water our plants and it's not gonna leak out the sides. And then I use this tool that I showed you earlier and I'm just gonna press down in between each of the like braid strands just to make sure it's stuck on and to cover the holes gently because I don't wanna like flatten the braid out. Sometimes I flatten the braid out, but that's not what I'm wanting on this one. I want it to be a nice like puffy braid. Sometimes I'm still left with some holes. So the water leaks out a little bit, but I keep them on a, a saucer anyway, like on a tray anyway. So it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. So here we go, here's our braid. Now I'm gonna take my little circle and I'm actually gonna flatten it out a little bit more. I wanted them to be just a tiny bit bigger than that. Cookie cutter, mold, whatever. I don't know, I'm just gonna flatten it out a little bit so it's a little bit bigger. And then use that same tool I just used and make a drainage hole in the middle. So we have our drainage hole, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna use a little knife tool in that same kit, cut off the ends, both of the ends actually, keep those um, end pieces we just cut to make the legs because we want to use all the clay. And now I'm going to wrap the braid around the base and find how long I need to cut it and then cut it like that. Okay, and now I'm just gonna, this is how big the piece is. You can do whatever size you want. I'm just like really into mini small things. And I think a big reason for that is my grandma is really into little mini small things too, you know? So it makes me really like little small things. I don't know why. Okay, and now I'm just gonna wrap it around the bottom and the top one as well. And I try to keep the seams on the same side. This one, these ones are a little bit bigger than the one I made earlier. So I'm gonna try and make a, a smaller one next. Um, but they are still tiny, don't get me wrong. And then just using the knife, I'm just gonna smooth smooth, eh, smooth that seam so it's not as like seamy, <laughs> not as much of a seam. Okay, and then using that tool we used earlier, I'm going to press all around on the base and like go like this around the edge so that um, it attaches the base of the the base of our little pot to the braids so that they'll stay together when we bake them. Okay, so there's the seam where I like smoothed it out a little. This is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so now we have to make some legs for it. And I'm gonna use that little wad of clay that I had earlier, roll it into a ball, roll it just with my finger, because it doesn't have to be perfect. I actually like when the legs look imperfect. Roll it out into like a little noodle <laughs> as even as I can, but it's not like too big of a deal. Okay, and then using that knife, I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it into thirds. Roughly the same shape, but as close as I can get them to the same shape or length, the same amount of clay, okay? If that makes sense. I don't know if anything I'm saying is even making sense. Then I roll them into balls and now I'm gonna roll them into the legs just with my finger. And I usually do short legs on my small pots, but on this one, I'm actually gonna try and do longer legs. And then I'll just sit them like next to each other to make sure they're at least close to the same height. Cause we do kind of scrunch them down. So you wanna make the legs a little bit longer than what you're wanting them to be. Ooh, I need to take a little bit of off of that and put it onto this one. And you'll definitely be able to tell if the clay's like not, if there's like a big difference in the amount of clay you're using for them. So you can just kind of adjust as you roll them out like this, do you get to a point that you feel it's like pretty even? I'm going to turn my little pot upside down. Oh, this one's gonna be so cute because I'm doing longer legs, like I said. All right, now I'm just gonna flatten it so it's about the same like height all the way around. And then I'm going to put the legs on, just sit them on and kind of push one side down a little. Does that make sense? so that it, it attaches the clay together. I'm just like flatten out the legs a little so that I know they're going to stay so that it'll be able to stand once it's baked, which does take a little bit of finessing. The legs, if you do long legs like this, it is definitely a little bit more annoying. The, the shorter the legs, the easier it is. You don't even have to put legs. I just like the look of the legs on it. I use this little needle, which this seems so weird, but I promise if you're not using the glue especially, it helps like the, the pieces stick together. So I'm just gonna push the needle down through wherever there's a leg and it helps like attach the clay. Try not to poke it out of the side, if that makes sense, if you know what I mean, like out of the side of the leg. Otherwise you'll have a hole you have to clean up. I don't know why this really helps though. Like that. 
cutie. I really like it. These legs are really weird, but like, I kind of like that, you know? All right, so I'm gonna put it upside down in the thing to bake. Well, let's make sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, upside down onto the tray to bake. Yeah, now I'm just gonna continue making them so that I can bake a whole bunch of them at one time. So here's the little three tiny pots I made. They're so cute, right? Okay, I think they're really cute. And put it in the oven for 15 minutes. Two seventy-five. Well, for Sculpey clay, I'm not sure about the other brands. For Sculpey clay, you bake them at two seventy-five for fifteen minutes per quarter inch of clay. Mine are about a quarter inch, so I'm just doing fifteen minutes. Um, yeah, then you take them out, let them cool until they're totally cool, and then you can go ahead and plant them, which is really cool. So actually, if you want to see me pot up some of my hand-made um, planter pots then stay tuned until my next video because I will be doing a lot of potting. I have like 20 small little pots I handmade over there that I'm gonna pot some very uncommon plants in and I will be doing a giveaway. So you could win, well, if you want to, cause they're kind of ugly, but they're also, they're like kind of ugly that they're cute, like so ugly they're cute kind of. If you want to win a hand painted, handmade pot by me with a plant in it, I'm going to put really cool plants into them. Then stay tuned until next video where I will be doing a giveaway there. All righty. Okay, so I just pulled them out of the oven a few minutes ago and they are cooled down. And yeah, I just like to pull them off the pan to let all of them cool because the pan stays hot, you know? Okay, and then I'll just put them on my counter. All right, so now's the most stressful moment and it is time to see if they will stand on their legs without breaking. We're good, we're good. Looks solid. Yay, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. It looks like it has like human legs. Okay, anyway, push that boy aside. There's this one this little random weird one and this one. I love them. The weirder, the better in my opinion. Okay. So that is it for this video. Remember everything will be linked down below and that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see my next one. Bye.